Hey, guess what time it is? It's time for Crate of the Week. Uh, what is Crate of the Week? Well, uh, if you go to the website This Week in Rust, you will find a newsletter in uh, issue 501. Oh, is this week. At least it is this week right now. And uh, if you go down to Crate of the Week, you will find Parcel. And I know what you're thinking. Ugh, what is Parcel? <laughs> like, ah, parsers, compilers, ah, uh, what, what the hell? Um, it turns out that uh, Parcel is a library for parsing. And actually, it is a sort of a front-end for the sin crate and in particular the uh and if you don't know what that means essentially this crate means nothing to you <laughs> like if you haven't ever played around with parsing uh let's uh then then almost uh then it almost is gonna make no sense so i'm just gonna search very quickly for sin now, sin is kind of the uh, standard way to turn something that looks like Rust source code into an uh, an abstract um, thing. It's how macros are created. Now, often uh, a, a procedural macros in particular, and it turns out be that. Uh, to create a parser with um, with sin, you need to uh, go through a process of kind of like manually creating a bunch of parse functions and so forth. And that's kind of boring, at least uh, it doesn't seem like it is um, sensible. So parcel does the work of building your parser and the parser then parses your code, if that makes any sense. So it's kind of like parses all the way down. <laughs> because actually sin is parsing the parcel, which is then writing something for sin. Anyway, carrying on. The How does this thing work? Now, uh, like a lot of documentation, this uh, crate or documentation for kind of advanced use cases this documentation is almost written for people that n would would not really need the documentation well in the, in the sense of like it 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 assumes a lot of knowledge um because for example what it's doing is it r allows you to define in this case an enum with different types of things that your language could have in it like a null value or a boolean or integer or float or just string and then we uh the trick is this parse drive and it will then uh allow you to create a parser automatically if that makes any sense and then the parser will generate something that turns your uh it will use the parser that it has generated to be able to parse code. And then you sp it spits out something that looks a lot more like this, which is a representation of the code that you want to, that you have parsed uh, in like Rust source code form. If this makes no sense, I apologize. Uh, it's, a, it's a really fun field to get into. One that I know, uh, unfortunately, a, a very little about parsing is a slightly complicated topic um, but I thought I would give it a little bit of a shot so I've downloaded the source code here and look gone into the test directory there are no examples in parsel we're still at uh, 0.12 but you can see here that I've got um, on line 29 what I want to do is what do I want to do this uh, the test here is attempting to parse an assignment. So we're assigning 13.37 uh, to some in, uh, some identifier foo. Um, the and to do that, I use a th sorry. 
To do that, I've got my little assignment statement here and I implement pars, or at least I derive pars with, and that's 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 it. So you can, we can look and find a similar thing for, uh, in this case, we're trying to assign to a, uh, oh, oops, a literal that is uh, using within 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 single quotes, and uh, that's probably the best way to go forward is to def see how this language, or sorry, this library does what you would like for it, and kind of see if it matches your intuition. If you have ever used a context-free grammar, uh, I, actually, I don't want to make too many claims about it, but I was going to say, it, this looks to me like Bacchus nor form, the BNF, uh, essentially in Rust code we'd, with our uh, structures and then uh, we just add this parse annotation and uh, ask the Rust compiler to interpret that and to generate a parser that will create the right parsing types for the specifications that essentially are provided by the puzzle library. I know that it sounds really complicated, uh, but hopefully it's a lot of fun to play around with if you are into parsing and you want to write your own programming language or you want to extend Rust in some way. So have fun with it and uh, I shall see you next week for the next crate of the week. Bye-bye.